Good afternoon, Tony Dottino here, doing my live with Tony, and today I want to talk about lifelong learning and its impact to our overall mental fitness uh, as we get older, and it really doesn't matter at what age we are, but it, it has a huge impact. And I'm reading the April issue of Mind, Mood, and Memory, Mind, Mood, and Memory, that comes out of the Massachusetts General Hospital. And their headline here is, How Being a Lifelong Learner Reinforces Memory and Sharpens Other Thinking Skills and Elevates Your Mood. And I can only say from uh, the work I've done over years of um, the Memory Championship and integrate, uh, inter um, interfacing with people in different workshops and uh, seminars that one of the elements of a healthy brain as we get older is to consistently put ourselves in a lifelong learning situation or as I call it handling mental challenges which are ways of learning new things and putting new new thoughts and memories into our brains and new skills that then facilitate our, our self-esteem and our ability to focus on things that we're hearing and things we're involved in at our work with our family with our kids uh, with our, our jobs, and so it has broad implications. And so I think the first thing that's important in this article that I thought it really stressed is, but what does it mean to be a lifelong learner? We don't need to go back to school. Like some people, oh, does that mean you want me to go back to college or I got to go back to taking an adult education program? No, it, it, you could if you're learning new skills, but God, there's so much now on the internet. There's so many Googles and YouTubes and things that teach people things. Uh, as I've even had to fix a few things, I can go and it's amazing. I key into Google and there's a video of somebody teaching how to fix this part or how to fix this piece of equipment or machine. So lifelong learning doesn't mean that you have to go back to college or you have to go back to a school formal program for a series of weeks. So the idea may uh, kind of going back to college, right? But lifelong learning does not require a formal education or making expenses to yourself. Lifelong learning is driven by your innate curiosity, meaning do you have just a natural curiosity or a desire to want to know how things work or why things, why is the sky blue, as we say, or, uh, you know, do you have this natural curiosity to just want to learn? Do you find, now here's one of the things I'm finding in, in one of the workshops I'm currently a part of, and that is, can you sit and talk with people and ask them about where they grew up, uh, what did they think of their schoolwork, did they go to college, well, what college did you go to, or what did you like in school, what subjects did you excel at. If I summarize, we can keep going. What, what did you did you get married? Do you have any children? Do you have any grandchildren? Do you have uh, do you still work? What, what is your job? How how does that work? Tell me what you do. I mean, just sitting and talking to people, as I learned years and years ago, listening to audio tapes of Wayne Dyer, is like people are like books. And all, if you're waiting at an airport or you're waiting at a station for, and you're delayed, just talk to the person next to you and just strike up a conversation. So lifelong learning here is, it doesn't have to be part of a class. People can explore their interests on their own, going to a library, picking up a YouTube, or just talking to another person. And just making yourself a student of asking questions of other people. The acquiring of knowledge can and should go on for a lifetime. Your brain functions such as memory, processing thoughts and listening to what you're hearing or reading, concentration, focus as I, I talk to it, communicating as well as mood and self-confidence all benefit through learning new information and building new skills which is another way of saying your life can continue to be an inspiration and your learning can continue forever in a way that says, I just want to continue to grow and learn and therefore I maintain a vibrance. I maintain a level of excitement. I look up to each day as a new learning possibility and I'm not trying to be overly crazy about this, but the fact of the matter is if you just did this once a week and you made a point of 
talking to someone you met at a park or someone that uh, you're friends with and just you want to explore a different part of their life and how they managed to raise their kids or how did they manage to deal with a, a boss that they loved or, or in reverse. Numerous studies in the years have demonstrated that the cognitive stimulation associated with lifelong learning promotes neuroplasticity. And another way of saying it promotes the continued growth of the neurons and the memory uh, uh, traces that you've got in your, in your brain. And so it just continues to promote those activities. These activities give the brain an ability to reorganize itself and may even associate itself with the reduction of Alzheimer's and or dementia. And so there have been studies that have been done that really have talked to if you're constantly learning new things and you're growing like the muscle, and it's not muscle, it's like the, the fibers in your brain and you're thickening those fibers, some of the diseases uh, of dementia may not have as strong an impact. And so studies have been done on that. A 2022 study published in Neurology, it's a medical journal, suggests that continued learning protects the brain and boosts what they call cognitive reserve. And it helps build the resistance to aging and disease. Cognitive reserves refers to how the brain best uses its resources. So we could go on and on. I think you've got the essence of the message, which is to ask yourself the question, so what am I learning this month? And I, I'm good if you said, you know what, I'm gonna make it a point this month to just go talk to somebody that I haven't spoken with in a while and just sit down and have a, just a, a whole different conversation about their, what they did and what their jobs were and what they liked about their jobs and what they liked about the, their education what they think about it as today, and how has it helped them. I mean, you just become a, a, a question machine, asking them questions about their life and becoming a student and how they answer those questions. Because what this article goes on to say is these have major benefits to us, not just in our mental functioning, but social interaction. Now you say, wow. So I'm a part of this workshop right now, and people are coming from different walks of life, and the value that they're getting from it is social interaction. And you've heard me talk about social interaction for three years, and how crucially important it is, and long-term mental fitness, certainly in our attitudes and our moods, and also feeling like we're not alone at whatever endeavors, or challenges, or problems we may have at a certain point in time. And so meeting with other people and talking with them has not been easy during the COVID lockdowns, but with some of these restrictions being reduced and minimized, it's a great opportunity for you now to go out and meet other people in the world that may just be in your neighborhood, that you may be sitting at maybe your swimming pool if you're out during the summer in a swimming pool in your community. Uh, maybe you walk, somebody's walking by with a dog and you stop and talk about their dog and why did they, I mean, there's different elements to learning just in conversation with talking to people. And, and make it enjoyable, don't make this like, oh God, I gotta do this. And, for you know Tony so you know on this video and just go have fun with it and, and find people and you'll be amazed at what you learn and sometimes you may be in a formal group people are in chess clubs and uh, bridge clubs and different you know, social community clubs and senior groups and centers uh, kids have all kinds of teams that they're part of and, and building the skill of just talking with other people and making yourself the student the student of that. I we can't tell you how often I will sit in a public area at a distance sometimes and just sit on a bench or a chair and just watch people walk by and listen to conversation uh, that they're having or looking at uh, what their, their facial expressions are like and just using that as what I call getting out and seeing what the world is doing. And so, I think we can all do this and learn from one another and just break down the boundaries and the barriers that we have uh, to people. 
and just have a respect for everyone and what they can offer to us. And as this article goes on to say, I mean, these interactions we have are invaluable to us in our own lifetime health. So lifelong learning engages the systems in the brain involved in creating new memories. You're connecting new information with older information, which is a way of exercising your brain, which is terrific. I mean, who thinks of, we exercise our body and our muscles, and you see these guys in these gyms, and they're doing all, well, what are you doing to exercise your brain? The multitasking that can go on in learning environments also stimulates regions of the brain that promote better memory, focus, and communication. The socialization aspect of learning in a class or a discussion group or in any other setting can improve your own personal mood and or outlook and thus your cognitive functioning. And I could go on and on. I think this is a fantastic article. It's in the April issue of Mind, Mood, and Memory. And it just supports something you've heard me talking about, one of the mental challenges, uh, one of the, the uh, activities we have to build long-term brain health are mental challenges and the social interaction that you may get from that and being part of a group or just a discussion group of people just sitting around talking about a topic uh, can be extremely enlightening, but more importantly, beneficial to your own personal mental fitness. And this is my Wednesday live with Tony. My goodness, the days go by so quick. We're now into the third day of May, if you can believe that much. And uh, we're off and going. So uh, I will get back out on here on Friday. I've got a busy day on Friday. I'm going to try to get this uh, live with Tony done early Friday morning before I start my day because I suspect it's going to dissipate before me in no time. Have a great week. We'll see you on Friday.